Welcome. Welcome back from lunch. Good lunch, good lunch. Yeah, yeah. Good lunch today. Good science camp? Good science camp, yes, yes. Okay. Today we want to talk about some wind energy. Wind energy. The wind energy, yes. So yesterday we talked about data. We talked about data to help us uh, predict where our catapult was going to to uh, land. You know, we we're going to launch our pom pom, and where is it going to land? Today we're going to use our data to make a design. We have an objective to have our wind turbine create the most energy, and we're going to use our data to help us design a wind turbine to create the most energy from the wind turbine. We'll start out with a little background about wind energy and talk about uh, the scientific method and then introduce our turbine design competition. After that, we'll go into detail with the team event and we'll talk about the details of the turbine design and what we would like you to do with your experimentation and then afterwards, what we'd like you to present to the entire group. So wind energy around for a long, long time. In the center is a wind energy from a farm. This type of wind turbine was on a farm that my wife Rose grew up on and it was used to help pump water. <laughs> And on the right, you see a modern wind turbine. One reason we want to concentrate on wind turbines is because of the renewable energy and because of the increasing global temperature from global warming. If you look at the graph, you can see the global temperature warming by degrees centigrade over the years from early 1860 up through 2000 and it's continuing to increase. And look at the graph closely, the blue line is the average and the yellow shows the range. And 
Remember yesterday with the cars, we took an average and we took a range with the cars. Similar data. We do the same math on, on the car data to help us with car understanding to pick a car and we do the same math on this data to help us understand global warming. And this global, these global temperatures are tied to carbon dioxide emissions, which come from fossil fuel burning, such as coal. So where do we where do we use our energy? Energy is used in many different places. And much of our energy is used for electricity production. This data is for the United States, but it is tip probably typical for much of the world. So where does electricity come from? Here are non-renewable resources. Non-renewable resources, coal, natural gas, oil, and nuclear energy. Eighty-three percent. That's a lot of energy. And only seven, about seventeen percent, comes from renewable energy. Sixteen of that is from hydro, such as dams. Let's take a closer look at renewables. Oops. Okay, here's a global energy consumption over the world. Okay, let's look at where you live. Where is Seoul? Yeah, bright lights. Yeah. So here are renewable energy resources. Hydropower, solar, geothermal, going down into the ground, pulling heat from heat or cooling from the ground, and waves from the ocean, and also wind energy, which we'll talk about today. Think about the ocean and the ocean with the waves coming constantly. Could we harness that energy? And like I said, today we'll focus on our wind energy. One important thing about wind energy is its cost. And in order for people to use wind energy, its cost has to be low. And as the years go by, the cost of wind energy has been coming down. And that's important for its continued use.
In South Korea, wind energy continues, usage continues to grow. And there are many locations of wind energy farms in South Korea. So for wind energy production, the amount of energy depends on the design of the turbines. A well-designed turbine can produce enough power to power 1,400 households. But stop and think about the wind. What characteristic, what is it about the wind? What if the wind doesn't blow? There is no power. <laughs> Lights out. Yeah, lights out with no wind. So here is the inside of a wind turbine. There are three important things about a wind, the inside of a wind turbine. There is a blade that you see from the outside, and on the inside is the gear and the generator. And today we will work with a model of that type of wind turbine. And today we will have a goal of creating a design to get the most voltage out of our wind turbine. That will be our goal and we will use a scientific method to reach our goal. So let's walk through the scientific method for the, that we will use this afternoon. Our first goal is to state the problem. The problem is we want a blade design that will give us the highest voltage. You will have the opportunity to try many different blade designs of your choice. Okay, we'll gather information. You can go and look at the setup and see how your blade design will be tested. Okay. 
Okay, we'll, you'll be able to state a hypothesis. You'll be able to explore what settings work best and why. And you'll be able to try out those variables. And you'll be able to record the data. And then when you record the data, you'll make a table of your results and at the end you will graph your results. And at the end we'll have a competition of each of the eight teams and you'll test them out on the one tur wind turbine. So things to try today. So we can have the number of blades. Here we have six blades. You can try four, five, six, one, three, whatever your choice is. We can use a protractor to design the angle. Okay, and you record this. Very important to record. Part of your data set. <laughs> And uh, you can also have different shapes of blades. You have small blades, wide blades. And things we will keep constant. We'll use uh, turbine kits. We'll have the fans will stay constant. The, sand, the height of the fan will stay constant, the distance, and the angle, and we also use the high setting of the fan. Let me show you how the fan system works. So you will start by taking your data sheet on your table and making a hypothesis and recording your hypothesis. Your hypothesis might be, for example, more blades equals more volts. So you, you would try out, let's say you like to try out is three blades or four blades. So you would try out three blades and four blades and record your data yeah. here. Yeah. 
And at the bottom, you would write your conclusion. Once, then you may want to decide uh, which is the proper angle to have for the blades. Which is the best angle? And that might be your second hypothesis. More higher angle is is better. That might be your second hypothesis. And you would run maybe two or three different angles. You also may change the shape and run two or three different shapes. And at the end, we will, you will record the data by plotting an example of one of your variables. Okay. So when you go to your tables, you want to discuss with your team what variables you want to try and who's going to do what within your team. You want to have maybe two, at least two people cutting the blades out so you can try many different blade shapes. So keep track of your data on your data sheets, uh, keep your team organized, and then at the end we'll, you will select a speaker to come up and present your data and show a graph. So I think we can divide up into groups, uh, five people at each table. Here's an example of things to try for your data sheets. And remember to keep busy, record your data, and let's divide up at uh, four tables here, four tables here, and you can use the fans on each side to, uh, for your trials, okay? So go ahead and uh, go to the tables now. Thank you.
달콤한 영어 뭐야? 
what did you 